Hello there, everybody. Welcome back to the stream. All right, so let us start up some more Subnautica. So I know Kitty was in the chat a bit earlier saying hello, so I do want to say hello, Kitty. Welcome back to the stream. I hope you're doing good today. Um, excuse my hair. I did have a shower today, uh, which makes it sound like I don't shower often, but I do, I promise. Uh, I shower about as regularly as I can. Um, sometimes, even every day, if I'm being honest. I like showers, okay? I like showers. I don't always just take them to keep clean. Uh, sometimes I also take them because I just enjoy a shower, right? Some people are like, oh, why do you why do you shower, like, so much? It's like, you're, you're not a dirty person. I'm not. I'm not a dirty person. I'm actually a very clean person. So I had some food stuck in my teeth and it was bothering me. Um, I'm actually a very clean person, but I enjoy a shower. Showers make me feel good, so therefore I like showers. Excuse me, my thing's a bit weird now for some reason. Hold on. Oh my god, not that. Okay, hold on. Wait, how... Oh, I can do that. Maybe? Um, I don't know, my OBS is now looking very jank for some reason. Uh, it's, okay, well, I can just about doing that, I guess. <clears throat> no, actually, I can't. I don't know, why is it, why is it, why is it looking so stretched? I don't know, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Let me just set everything up, and then we'll be good to go. That's right here. Actually, wait, no, this isn't actually gonna work. Hold on. Let me give me like one sec. Give me like one sec. This is a little bit weird. It's very stretched. Even though it shouldn't be. No longer stretched, I guess. Okay, well, whatever, it's fixed now. It's fine. Okay, good. Perfection. Perfection. I will move this right here. And I will move this right here. I do indeed need to get a bigger monitor. Well, a second monitor. That would probably make this go a bit quicker because I wouldn't have to worry about certain things. Alright, <clears throat> now let's see. Sorry about that, Kitty. I wasn't ignoring you, I promise. Uh, let's see, let's see. My bangs do the same thing to me, always covering the Pokemon eye. It's annoying. Yeah. My hair has been doing that a bit more. I'm probably going to get it cut within the next week or so. I'm too scared to cut them, though, too short. I'm afraid I'll mess them up and make them look dumb. Here's the thing, Kitty. Here's one thing I've always thought about with hair. Um... It grows back, you know, it can grow back quick. I don't know how quickly your hair grows. Mine go grows by back really quickly. So if I get it cut and it looks dumb, it only looks dumb for maybe like a week or two, you know. Uh, but yeah, you know, just cut your hair. Don't worry about it. And you know what? It, it can't look dumb. It wouldn't look dumb, I'm sure. Have you played below zero yet? I was wondering how we I haven't played Below Zero yet. I'm debating if I want to play Below Zero soon or if I want to wait until, like, more of the fuller release comes out. I've heard mixed things. I, I've heard kind of mixed things. I hear it's really good. But I also heard some people aren't really too keen with how they did the story. But, I mean, I don't know. It seems good to me. From what I... from Well, I haven't seen anything. But if it's like Subnautica at all, it has to be good, right? So, we will be, be, we have, uh, I can't talk. We will be playing Below Zero sometime. I just don't know if it'll be soon or not. Maybe we can do it soon just to test it, and then maybe when full release comes out, maybe then play it more. You know, I'm not really sure. Um, I feel like I'd probably like it. If it's anything like how the Subnautica is with exploration, then I'll probably be really into it. I keep wondering if I should get it or not. I've been wondering for years, ever since it came out, and I'm still undecided. 
Yeah, I'm really not too sure how to how to how to do it. Like I have it. It's it really is just a case of um I don't quite know how to you know when when to start it. So I'm gonna pause right here because there is actually some stuff I should mention. So I did actually play this a little bit last night, which is why I'm in my habitat and not back on my uh, on my um sp space launcher, my Neptune launcher. Because I thought to myself, okay, well, I really want to get the alien containment facility. So, but I don't want to waste your time as I try to find it, right? So, uh, I, I was watching one of my friends play Hades last night. I do I do plan on playing Hades myself, but I figure I can watch a little bit of Hades, and I was kind of like half paying attention anyway, right? So, it's not like it really mattered too much. Um, so, I watched him play a little bit of Hades while I went and I gathered uh, the materials I needed for my alien containment uh, aquarium thing, right? Um, so I did that, I did find it. it. It thankfully didn't take me too long, and then I just started like, gathering a bunch of materials. And I kind of expanded on my base a little bit. I did put the eggs in the containment thingy, they did hatch, so that's good. Um, and... Yeah, I was really about it. I got a lot more titanium than I meant to. So, we might actually be going through this kind of quick if we're going to be finishing the game today. So, I thought what I'd do is I would look through my flora and my fauna. And I would see what I haven't scanned and I would try to go find them and scan them. If I don't get everything, it's not a big deal. But, you know, I'm going to try. At least with fauna. With flora, I'm not too sure. We'll see. Uh, but I, I, that's that's the plan for today anyway. So first off, I'm going to show you guys what I've been doing. Now, the Reaper has been a bit of a piece of shit outside, and I'll kind of tell you why. Because, fuck, there he is. Shit, 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 shit. Go inside. Okay, go inside. He's being an asshole. He's being an outright asshole, as you can probably tell and probably hear. He's being a bit of a pain. So, he almost destroyed my, my prawn suit, a.k.a. the Fragonator, a couple times. Because I would leave it here, I would just leave it out here because I'm like, okay, well, it's going to be fine. <clears throat> and then I'd go in my Cyclops. And then I would see him pick up my prawn suit and take it to my Cyclops. And then fling it somewhere. And then I have, I'd have to go get it. I had to get my prawn suit back at least twice. And he won't leave me alone. He literally will not leave me alone. I guess I brought him into this area now, so now he's just living here. Can he destroy your base? I don't believe so. I don't believe he can destroy my base. I, I He can clip through my base, but I don't think he can actually do anything to me or my base, thankfully. So he's being a little bit of an asshole, and I don't really like him. But I did put the eggs in, they did hatch. Um, I'll go and show you guys right now. So I put this, like, thing here. I, I made it look a bit taller. I think I still have a little bit more to do. Uh, so I think I'll also do that. But as you can see, I have a nice little aquarium here. I have some of my little fish babies, right? Um, we can go inside and have a look. So I have a baby stalker here, whom I can pick up if I want. Uh, I'm probably not going to, because I don't really want to, you know, mess with them. I have my little crab snake right here. Here's a cuttlefish, which is very, like, cute, but also kind of derpy. Like, look at him. And then, uh, I have a little crash fish somewhere. Here he is. So I put all the eggs that I could find in my lockers in here. I could maybe put more in. So he's trying to get in. He's trying. He's not succeeding, though. I think he wants to eat these things. I did do, like, a little bit of reading as well on a few things. Because um, I figure by the end of the game, I'm not going to get spoiled by anything. So I could probably do a little bit of reading. Um, and I did read that uh, some predatory fish will be attracted to fish in the aquarium. And in the alien containment facility. So, that might be why he's trying to get in here so much. But yeah, I have little little babies here. So, we're going to go through all of our data logs, like, at the end, I believe. Uh, I don't know how long it'll take. It'll probably take a little bit. But hopefully it won't be too long. Um, so, we're going to go ahead and do that. I did make this a little bit bigger. I still will need to finish this section. Uh, I need... I need three more glass and, like, a little bit more titanium. But I want to put some creep vines in there. I'm thinking maybe he'll put like an acid mushroom, maybe some creep vines. You know, if I find any more eggs, I don't think I have any more. But if I have any more eggs, I'm thinking I'll throw them in. 
I'm pretty sure I looked through all of these. I didn't see any more. No. Oh, wait, no. Is this an egg? All right, okay, I do have one more egg. So we'll see one more egg. We'll see one more egg hatch, I guess. So we'll go ahead and we'll just put this bad boy in right now. And then we'll go from there and we'll just see what happens. Uh, so I wonder what egg this is. It looks very different. I don't know. I can't scan it. So I don't know what egg it is quite yet. But I'm sure it'll be fine. We'll come back in a little bit and we'll see it. It probably hatched. It didn't seem to take that long when I was playing around with the, with the stuff last night. So, we'll see. He's like your guard dog that's dangerous to also you. Basically, my Reaper quote-unquote buddy is indeed very dangerous to everybody. Me included. Hey, River. Welcome back to the stream. How you doing today? Hopefully all is well. Oh, God. So, I'm thinking... Okay, so I need... So, I need quartz. I need quartz, so we're gonna go and we're just gonna get some quartz really quick. And I'm gonna try to be fast, so I don't get eaten by that reaper. Cause I don't think I have any more quartz in here, do I? Morning. External health damage detected. Nah, uh, no. Nah. Well, I'll take a couple like deep shrooms out. Uh, River says, how you guys doing? I'm doing good, thank you. Uh, you know, just chilling, having some subnautical fun, you know? Um, glad to hear you're doing good. I have another egg. Well, okay, I guess I'll put that in the thing, too. Man, I apparently just have a lot, of, a lot more eggs than I thought I did. If I can find a couple more quartz, that'll be really nice. Is this another egg? Shit, really? Wow, okay. Okay, well, I'll go put these eggs in there, too, I guess, real quick. I don't like you. My friend was, my friend last night was actually making fun of me a little bit. Because as I was playing through it, I, I kept telling him what was happening, and he kept on saying, oh, you're being bullied by a fish. How does it feel? And I'm like, yeah, I am kind of being bullied by a fish. Okay, so I don't know what eggs these are. They better hatch by the time, by the time I have to leave this planet. And they should. It looks like I, I think they hatched within like maybe thirty minutes to an hour when I was playing last night. We'll we'll see, we'll see. So I need to go get some quartz. But as you can see, I added to that a little bit. I'm sorry, I'm not really showing you too much because I won't get eaten. This reaper outside is really aggressive. So, I don't really want to stick around for longer than I need to. So, I want to get quartz. So, I'm not... I, I'm sure I can just find quartz. So, I'm not I'm not really super concerned. Um, you know, thinking about it, I think I kind of... I think I took some of my batteries out now that I think about it. I think I kind of maybe forgot to put them back in. But it's fine. We're gonna come back to our base anyway. So I'm not really too concerned. Now I think there's quartz. Please leave. Please leave me alone, Reaper. Okay, so I think there might be quartz around here. I hate this reaper so much. You you guys really have have no idea like how much pain this reaper has been causing me. It's been causing me so much grief. Like so so much grief. Kid says your ship is going to die. See, possibly. Like if I like if he can leave me alone, I will fix it. I just couldn't really fix it in the area because he'd just damage it again. So there's like really no point. But now there might be a point. Now I might be far enough away for it to matter. Um, I think. It looks like I might be. So I need quartz. I need quartz. So I am going to... 
just have a bit of a peek around for some quartz. I, I could probably do it in that area, but there's also a giant reaper nearby, so it might just be kind of dangerous. So we're going to just kind of go around and just see if I can find some quartz, and then we'll go back. I'll do my other stuff at the base. Uh, I don't imagine quartz should be too hard to find. He says, being not entirely sure if he'll be able to find quartz. Like, I see salt. I think I'll go to that one, like, to that base down there. I don't know if that base is safe or not. I'm hoping it is. Because if it's not, then that's going to be a problem. But, you know, we're going to go on a bit of an adventure anyway, because I do have some things I want to find for my flora uh, and fauna. So we're going to be taking a little bit of a tour around anyway. Yeah, I'm not sure where I am, actually. I can tell you right now, it doesn't sound too safe. Engine powering down. So I'll fix the... Okay, so I'm gonna tell you guys what my plan is. So I'm gonna fix this first off. I'm gonna fix my ship. Then I am going to go around and f try to find quartz, but also try to find some of the fauna that I probably haven't gotten yet. But this uh, fixing this takes uh, priority currently because it's kind of about to die. And I'd much rather it not. I don't have any spare batteries on me. You know, I am... Uh, I'm clearly not doing much thinking right now, am I? I think I left a lot of my stuff back at base. By accident, which is kind of a whoopsie. So yeah, I'll repair this, I'll go back to my base, I'll get the stuff in my base that I kind of forgot, and then we're gonna go do a little bit of exploring to find the floor and fauna that I've missed. I think I've only missed a, a, a couple, so it shouldn't take too long. And, you know, I feel like I can use the wiki now to find what I need. I think it's perfectly reasonable uh, to do that now. Because I was doing my best to avoid it. I wanted to find everything myself as I could. Like, as I kind of played. But now we're at a point where we're at the end of the game. I basically have uh, everything that I need. I've gone to everywhere that I probably could. So I think we're safe to just kind of use the wiki and find the last few things. If I don't find them, I don't find them. It's really no big deal. But if I can find them, that'd be great. Oh. Okay, and this should be the last one, I think. Yeah. Go to the sand shark doesn't hate me. Alright, looking good. We're looking really good now. Yeah, so I think I did forget. Yeah, I did. Okay, so I only have two batteries in there, so yeah, that would explain a bit. Mm -hmm. And I'll show you guys where I found the alien containment thing, too. Because I did watch another video, and that one was a little bit more helpful than the one that I saw initially. There we go. I guess I could put uh, these ones in, couldn't I? Yeah, okay. Alright, now we'll go back home, and then from there we'll hopefully not get hit anymore. I don't want to get hit by the Reaper anymore, but it's probably going to hit me. It's probably going to be a bit of a pain, and yeah, then we'll just kind of explore. I'll, I'll go there first, and then I'll see what Florian Fawn I need, and if we find quartz along the way since it's starting to be daytime, then, you know, I should be good. Like, ideally, I find quartz as I'm going home. 
But I'll probably find quartz around the area that I found the uh, alien containment thing. So. We shall see. I see a thing down there. See, I see a few things down there, but it's, it's not quartz. I don't really care about it too much. I don't want to fill my inventory if I don't need to. I have everything I need, really. Like, last night, I... See, see what I mean? See what I mean by he's being kind of an asshole? I don't mind him, but he, he is definitely like a little bit of a pain. He's being a bit of a butt. So I might need, I might need to park my Cyclops away somewhere else. Or I might need to go on a slower thing so he doesn't hear me as much. Yeah, maybe that's what I'll do. Maybe I'll park my Cyclops a little bit farther away. If I could, if, if I could pull him away, that'd be great, actually. That'd be ideal. Maybe I'll see if I can do that. No, I don't know. He went, he went somewhere. He went off somewhere. No idea. Well, I know he's over there. Oh, no. Look. See, he's trying to get my fish, I think. Man. Yeah. No, I, I think I think mistakes have been made in my location. In my base location. But it's fine. It's fine. Uh, they are killable. You can kill them. I think you can kill pretty much anything in this game. One of my friends did kill the Ghost Leviathan. Uh, because it was annoying him. He was even telling me last night, like, oh, I should probably just kill the Reaper. But... Uh, I don't, I don't really want to, because I think right now it's kind of amusing, to be honest, and I'm going to be leaving this area soon enough anyway, so I don't think it really matters too much, as long as I'm safe while I'm here, you know, like, we're, like, I, like, ideally, ideally we finish the game today, ideally, because I love the game, but I think... I think I, I got I've done pretty much everything I want to do. I've gotten everything I want to get. So I think it is time for us to say goodbye to this beautiful planet. And well, leave right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You know, while I'm here, I'm gonna scan for quartz. Because I only need a few more to finish off the last bit of the alien containment bay. Let's see if those eggs hatched. I'm, I'm assuming they didn't. No, they didn't. Oh, this one's moving, though. Okay, so that one's probably going to hatch fairly soon. This one's also moving a little bit. See, I don't know what eggs they are. See, I do like my little aliens. I my, well, my little aliens. I do like my little like alien fish. They're pretty nice. They're kind of cute. They are kind of cute. Even though they're causing like that the reaper to try and kill me constantly, they are pretty cute. You know, and and I'm, I'm glad I have them. Even if right now they are kind of causing me some grief. Uh, whoops! Didn't want to do that one. Okay, I think we're gonna go back up really quick. I think we're gonna go back up really quick and we're just gonna wait a moment. Okay, I didn't I didn't take into account that this guy probably would be causing me a bit more pain than uh init in than uh, normal. So where'd he go? He's up there now. I think as long uh, normally they don't attack me when I'm in the prawn suit. Yeah, no, he wants my fish. 
He wants my fish bed. Okay, so we're just gonna be as safe as we can be. If I'm safe, I don't think he'll do anything. I just need to stay safe. So I need three more glass, so I only need like one more quartz and then I should be good. So I'll get one more quartz, I'll go I'll finish the thing and then... Then we'll go on our little journey to find what we're missing. So I shouldn't take too long. Well, I say that now, but I don't think it'll take too long. Okay, well, I can't see my inventory game. Okay, there we go. I think that's good. I think that's good. You could try getting a strong weapon and killing it. Well, with killing things in this game, you don't really have weapons, right? Like, the only way my friend was able to kill the leviathans, like the ghost leviathan, was because he, he kept grappling into it like this for about 20 minutes. And he killed it. So it took a lot of time. He said in the end it probably wasn't worth it. But he wanted to do it and he did. Right? Um, so it's kind of, it'd be the same thing here. If I tried to kill the reaper, it'd probably take me like 15 to 20 minutes of rodeoing it. And then killing it that way. And I don't really, I don't want to do that to you guys. If I was going to do that, I would have done that last night. But like I said, I think this is kind of funny. I think it tells a bit of a story, you know. And we're leaving this planet the same way we kind of dropped on it. You know, fearing a reaper and getting a bit harassed, right? And besides, that reaper has been by my home for so long that I, I feel like it'd be kind of just in, be in poor taste to kill him, you know? He's been a part of this journey with me since I made this base. And now he's gonna see me off. He, d he wants me to leave. I'm doing it. He doesn't like me. And you know, I like him, to be fair, I like him, but he doesn't like me too much. Yeah, I do think he's cool. I do think he's a very cool uh, alien fish creature. Yeah, there we go. Now I have an aquarium that is three high. So I do want to get some creep vines. I want to put some creep vines in. I don't know if I can make a little crash fish pods. I don't think I can. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just plant like an acid shroom. To be fair, I probably could plant more of those, but eh, it's fine. I'll go and just get some creep vines really quick. And then I'll plant those and then we'll go on our journey. Does that feel when your home becomes like dangerous? To like giant fish that want to kill you you don't need to plant them in there yeah apparently you can plant stuff in your alien containment things i don't think it matters but i'm trying to make it look a little bit pretty right which is why i'm gonna plant some of these in there because i think you need you need seaweed right you need some seaweed you can't really have an aquarium without some form of seaweed take like three i think i think three will fit in there i don't actually know Okay, I think I hit something, but I don't know what I hit. Why does he want to eat my fish so much? Maybe that's why he's hanging around so, so much now. Maybe it's not so much I lured him over here with my body. I lured him over with my fish. There's so many beautiful places in this game I used to spend hours just sightseeing. It really is so, so nice, right? Like, it, it like this game's beautiful. You, you can't... Like, if anyone were to, were to say to me, you know, this game doesn't look good. 
I'd say you're lying, because this game actually does look really nice. Like, it's a very beautiful looking game. Okay, so I can only plant two of those. Okay. Uh, that's not bad. It's not bad. Uh, I'll turn this into lubricant. And then I guess I'll just go maybe get two more acid mushrooms and then maybe some aerogel from my planter. From my planter out back. I guess I do have some of these I could put in there too. What do I have? I have two of those. Take one more acid shroom. I didn't need to do that. I was just making sure. I was just I was just prepping it just in case. It's okay, my little fishies. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. I'll protect you. I promise. Yeah. So now we got some stuff growing here. So this is cool. This is cool. Yeah. All right. Okay. So now we'll... Uh, so let me just see what I have in my data thing. I'm not going to read any... Well... No, I'll read. I'll read some of the... Some of the uh, fauna that I've recently gotten. Oh, I also did get two new voice logs the other day. Uh, when I was just kind of exploring. One of them was this. Please observe safety protocols CSP-21 before handling classified cargo. Not too sure what that's about, but, you know, sure. And then I have this one. Aquariums provide an ideal opportunity to study alien fauna up close. Select carefully which life forms you bring on board. They may also be studying you. Yeah, so those are the two things I got there. So, I do have a wiki page open. So I can see what I've been missing. Um, I think I have something called a blighter. Which I don't have, which is kind of, it kind of looks like this. Um, so once again, we'll, we'll, if I have time, I'll try to go through all of these as well. I'll just give everything a final read through. Uh, before we end the game. So I need a blighter, I believe. So let me let me just go over here and have a look at the wiki page. Well, I don't actually have the wiki page open, but I do have the wiki page. So I'm not a fauna. Now I'll just see what I'm missing and where I can get it. Uh, yeah, blighter. So yeah, so we have a, a blighter. So that's in the blood kelp caves and the blood kelp zone. So I've been there a lot. I've been there a lot. I think I have pretty much everything else. I also did find out that um, when I was doing some reading, that the Warper should, in theory, be friendly to me now. Um, that's something I, I read on the thing, where I was like, oh, that's interesting. Never read those? You'd actually be interested in that? Yeah, like I say, I should have the time, because I do want to read through all of it, if I can. I don't know how long it'll take, but I don't think it'll take too long to just kind of get through everything. Um, so let's go to the blood kelp zone. I think I know roughly where that should be. I think that should be... You know what? I might even get a map open. Just, just because. Subnautica... Map. But yeah, I found out the warpers, um, should actually be friendly to me now. Because, I guess they were at the start of the game, but... They... Hold on, I'm just trying to see the Blood Kelp Zone. So, Blood Kelp Zone is... Okay, just straight that way. Okay, it should be easy enough. I feel like I've been to the Blood Kelp Zone. Um, but apparently they weren't aggressive to me at the start of the game either. I'm just gonna make sure it's not attacking me. I don't think it is. Ugh. 
Okay, so anyway, I don't think Warpers were aggressive to me at the beginning of the game. Apparently their aggressiveness becomes like, like they become much more aggressive um, as the game goes on. Because you become infected and then they attack you because you're infected. And their whole thing is they deal with the infection. So in theory, they should be fine with me now. We should be cool with each other. So we'll see how that goes. Because if I don't need to be afraid of the Warper, then that would be awesome. Because Warpers are like one of the few things that I was still pretty spooked by. Engine powering up. And so firstly, I'll take you guys to where I found the alien containment. Um, so that should be about this way. And then we'll loop back around, and then then I'll go here, and I'll, I'll try to go to the Blood Kelp Zone. Because I'm pretty sure I've been to the Blood Kelp Zone before. I'm, I know I've been to the Floating Island place before, so I should be able to reach the Blood Kelp Zone. So if you're wondering what I did, I literally started there, and then I just kind of went about north, like, what was it? North, like, west-ish? Northeast-ish? Yeah, about northeast-ish. And then I just kind of kept going this way. Now, I don't have a sea moth anymore, as you guys know, because mine kind of did get exploded a long time ago. So I kind of had to do it like this, and, and it's a bit m less convenient in the Cyclops because it's, it's bigger, right? It's a bit bigger and a bit slower. But I made it there quickly enough. So I'll just show you guys the location, and then... Um... Then I'll go and see what else I can find. Okay, well, we're going through a bit of a, a pain in the ass zone, apparently. So, we're just going to deal with these ampules as they, like, try to slam into me for some reason. Yeah, no, this this game's really nice. Like I, like I was saying, I'm pretty sure this is probably... I'm pretty sure this is probably going to be... Whoops, I didn't mean to do that. I'm pretty sure this is going to be the final uh, stream of this game. I'm pretty sure. Because I don't have that much more to do. So if we need... Yeah, that, looks, that looks really creepy when it's not spawned in. So even if we need to go a little bit over time to finish it, I think we will. And if I don't get everything, if I don't scan everything to there is to scan, then I'll probably just say, well, you know, I'll just look at it on the wiki, right? Because there really isn't that much left. Like for carnivores, from what I see, it's only this thing that I'm missing. The thing that I need to go to the Blood Cup Zone for. And I've probably seen it, but I probably didn't uh, scan it. Yeah, those ampules don't even really do that much damage. Yeah, and then you see like the smoky stuff. And then it would be... Just down here is where I would have found it. I to go a little bit lower. Yeah, so I don't know if I was over here before. I don't think I was. So mine would have been literally right where it says containment. Just kind of like right in that little area. Because there's a little like data box there that you can just barely see right there in the center of my reticle. And that's where it was. I did go into that ship to explore as well, because I thought, why not? Uh, but then I got stuck in a vent, and I couldn't move, and then I died. So I'm not going back in there, because I'm calling that the cursed vent. So we're not going in there anymore, but, you know. Okay, actually, if I'm correct, the Blood Kelp Zone should be roughly this way. I think it's probably on... Yeah, it should be right where that is, actually. So we'll go there, and we'll see if we can... 
Um, whoop. I don't want to hit that. And we'll see if we can uh, find it. It shouldn't be hard to find. Oh. Wait a minute. Oh, is this the island? Did I accidentally stumble across the island? Was it just beside the island? Like, this whole time? It is, isn't it? Well, how come people don't just say go by... Well, maybe... Well, no, it's not spoilers. Well, it is, but... Well, how come, how come none of the videos literally said just go to the island and then, like, go that way a little bit? Okay, those things should be friendly to me. I'm not gonna check right now, but maybe I'll check later. I don't want to risk it. I don't want to risk it right now. I could. I could. I could. I'm, you know, fuck it. I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll have a little bit of a look. Because in theory, they're friendly to me now. In theory. I'm also going to save, just to be extra sure. Because you know what? You can't be too cautious when you're dealing with weird alien octopus. I don't like how it's looking at me. I guess it's studying me, maybe? I don't like that, but I... But I guess it is... I guess it is safe. I don't... I didn't like how it was looking at me, but I, I, it, it wasn't attacking me like it normally would have. So, you know, I'm gonna go ahead and say that, yeah, it probably is actually fine now. It just makes me a little uncomfortable. But I can kind of deal with that if I have to, I guess. So it should be down here just a little bit then. So this thing should be easy enough to spot. Especially if I don't have to worry about the uh, warpers anymore. That peeper just got bonked, and I don't think he's getting. I don't think he's getting back up. And then after this, I only have a couple other things to find in terms of fauna. I'll see. If, well, depending on how long the fauna take, I might do the flora. I might not. I might even have everything in flora. Um, so we will see. Otherwise, though, I think I did scan pretty much everything. Yeah, so this should be the blood kelp zone right here. That is it right there, I think. That might be it. I'm actually not incredibly sure. We'll go a little bit lower. Go a little bit lower, because it did say caverns as well, so it would probably be in here too. Oh no. Uh, I've wedged it. I've wedged it. Okay. Okay, no, that's not it. Lava, lava lizard egg discovered. Oh, so there are lava lizards and gasopods. Okay, so now we have a little babies we can go back to when we go home, I guess. This is looking a little bit lopsided, but that's fine. So let's see if we can find what they are. I know kind of what they look like. That's not them. But they look kind of like that. I wish I scanned these. I did. Welcome aboard, Captain. Do I have water on me? I don't. Okay, well, I'll go seek fluid in a moment. But I want to see if I can find 
Look, is that it? That, I think that, yeah, that's it. That's it right there. Okay, so actually, let's exit. So I can scan you. Yeah, you can bite me if you want. It's fine. Oh my god, where'd it go? Oh, they're just so small. They're so tiny. Please let me scan you. I don't want to have to... There you go. So that's a blighter. I don't like those spiders, dude. Don't like them. So I think that's the only other carnivorous life form I need. So your kitty says I'm going to lurk while I make dinner. Okay, sounds good. You lurk, you make din dins. And hell, even tell me what you make if you want, because I do like cooking. And whenever I hear someone's cooking food, I'm always curious what they're making. Vital signs stabilizing. Whoops. Tuna sandwiches, dude. Tuna sandwiches are great. Don't eat it often, but love tuna. Tuna is really good. Hmm. Uh, here you go. There we go. Put all the seeds back. Okay, so now, let's see. So now I have the blighter. So I have uh, that. You guys can't see the, the, the page I'm looking at, but uh, trust me when I say that I have pretty much most of these. So am I missing any in... I have the cuttlefish now. I actually found out last night that I didn't scan the Gary fish. So I did go out and I did scan the Gary fish. I only found out about it because I saw a Gary fish and I was like, oh, you can scan this. And I was like, oh, I thought I did already. And I'm pretty sure I scanned you and you. I definitely scanned you, 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 Okay. Okay, well, actually, a better way of doing this would probably be to look at my thing and then just, like, reference it a little bit. So, okay, so we have all of these deceased. I just want to make sure I do have all of those. I think I do. So herbivores? Yes. I have the red eye eye, Reginald Spinefish, Spadefish, Hoopfish, Holefish, Garyfish, Magmarang, Oculus. Okay, I think I have all of those. Ghost Leviathan, Ghost Leviathan, Juvenile, Sea Dragon Leviathan, Sea Emperor, Juvenile. I don't know if you could scan the Sea Emperor. I don't think you could. I'm going to say you can't because... Well, it, it didn't let me when I was there. Let me just, like, double check. I think I do need this thing called the Rock Grub, but I'm not really sure. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the Sea Emperor Leviathan is... I don't think you could scan that. Yeah, it doesn't seem like it. Not from what I can tell, anyway. Now, I do have the Sea Treader Leviathan, which I never did get. I did go into its area, but I never did actually scan that one. Well, I never found it. I never actually found it. Um, so, Amoeboid. Don't know if I got an amoeboid. Scavengers and parasites. Okay, I did. Okay, so amoeboid, ancient floater. Let me just see here. So ancient floater, the bleeder. I'm pretty sure I got the bleeder. Blood crawler, cave crawler, floater. Oh, this is actually really nice. It's in the same order too. Uh, okay, I, I did get the rock grub. Maybe I got everything then. Rock grub, shittlebug. Yeah, because I got rock grub. Shittlebug. 
Yeah, okay. So I don't have the Sea Treader. Gargantuan Fossil. Did I get that? Hold on. Gargantuan Fossil. I mean, maybe. I want to say it's probably one of these. So I'll say I got it. I'll say I got it. I probably do, but I'm not 100% sure. So I guess the only thing I need is a Sea Treader then. So we'll go ahead and we'll get the Sea Treader. Now I kind of maybe have an idea where I can go because there is a place called the Sea Treader's Path. So that's probably the only real place I could go. So if the Blood Kelp Zone is up north, then I'd want to go kind of south, southwest, I think. Yes, east. Okay, so we're gonna go straight southwest, and we're gonna see where I end up. Okay, so this must be the floating islands. So if these are floating islands or underwater islands, I think I'm going the wrong way then. Okay, so this okay, so this is back to the pod. So if I use this as a bit of a guide. Okay, so this is going south. Okay, so I'm looking south now. That's accurate ish. Maybe. Whoops. Whoops, didn't mean to close that. Um, so, what I can do then... Well, if I'm going the way of the mushroom forest, then I'm going the correct way. So, we'll say this is floating islands. Which means mushroom forest is probably more so this way. Maybe. I don't know. Well, we'll see. We'll see what I get to. If I feel like I'm going the wrong way, then I'll go back there. And I'll use my spawn point as a guide uh, for where to go. But yeah, then I might honestly have about everything. Which is impressive, and then we can get ready to say goodbye to the game, I guess. What the fuck? Is this so much from Forest? Yeah, it is. Okay. Yeah, I saw that thing, I was very confused. Okay, so we're going the correct way. Now, I'm pretty sure I've been in there before. Oh, like a long time ago. I'm pretty sure I was in there a long time ago. Okay, so we're on the correct path. This is good. So as long as we keep going this way, we should make it. You know, as we... Okay, I'm seeing something like it zoomed on out, but I don't know what that... I don't know what that was. Yeah, what the fuck is that? What is that? I don't know. This game, see, this game's starting to get a little bit weird. But not weird in a bad way. You know. Just kind of weird in the sense that, um. I'm starting to see a few more glitches than I would, was, like, initially. Because I don't. I don't really think I came across that many glitches with this game before. But now I've been seeing them fairly regularly. Um, or at least more so than I was before. So this might be the dunes. No, I guess we're still in the mushroom forest. Yeah, 
But yeah, no, this game's been really good. I've really enjoyed Subnautica. But I always did, right? Like, because even before I did stream it... Like, see, here's the thing, right? Before I got into streaming, I did play Subnautica because it was, like, brand new. Uh, and there wasn't really much to it, but I enjoyed the idea of it. I liked it a lot. And then I played it on stream a couple times. Once again, I don't think the game had, like, a full fleshed out story at that point. But I played the game, and I enjoyed it. And this was a long time ago. Um, and it was, like, really fun. I really, really had a good time with it. But I never finished it. I never kept playing. Only because I thought, okay, well, we're getting into the double-digit parts already. And I haven't even really done anything. So people might get a little bit bored, so I'm going to just kind of stop playing. And then I did. But now I know that was kind of a mistake. Because... Well, you guys really enjoy this game, and I really do too. I, I, I say it was kind of a mistake, but in the end, I guess it was still kind of a good thing. Because I don't think the game would have been fully fleshed out uh, when I initially played... So, by waiting, I think I made the experience a lot more interesting for myself as well as you guys. But yeah, with how much I've played this game, both now and in the past, I you can, you can probably tell that I really, really enjoy Subnautica. It's a very good experience, but I like survival games like this. Yeah, like, I really, really, really like survival games like this. Because, yeah, they're just really fun. Really fun, really enjoyable. I do like to explore. I like to see what's out there. Like, it's overall just really neat. Like, if anyone's out there and they're, like, having reservations about playing Subnautica for some reason or another, just play it. Like, it's, it's such a good experience. Even if you feel like you'd be kind of, like, afraid. Because right? the game is scary, I'm not gonna lie. The game has its moments of being, like, really, really spooky. But it's definitely worth it. Is that an egg? What is that? I don't know, but it was very glowy. Okay, hold on. Where am I? I feel like... I feel like I don't like that sound that just played. Yes, that's more blood kelp. So... Grand Reef. I wonder if this would be the Grand Reef. Um, blood kelp zone. So there's still blood kelp here. So I'm in the correct kind of area, but it's just really dark. It's just really dark, so it's kind of hard to tell, like, which area is which. It's probably this way, because I think I did have a base set up in the Sea Treader Zone. I think. So it's probably more so this way. I think? Oh, that was a little bit of a... A little bit of a stutter. You know, this might have been the first area I took my brown suit out to as well, if I remember correctly.
So the sea trader should be fairly big, so I don't know how I would have missed them last time. Okay, so which base was this? Maybe this is the Grand Reef? Hey, welcome back, kitty! This might be the Grand Reef. Uh, okay, so let's take a guess and say this is the Grand Reef. So I would have went a little bit too far. So maybe I went over the Sparse Reef and I got into the Grand Reef. Maybe. Maybe. So if that's the case, then let's go back this way, but also go a little bit this way. Let's see how low we can go. Okay, now I'm not facing the correct way at all. I want to go this way. So we'll say this is the Grand Reef. We'll say this is the Grand Reef. So if this is the Grand Reef, then if we go a bit this way... We should get to the sea shredder path. Question mark? What I remember about the Sea Trader Path is it was pretty desolate. And this area looks a bit too pretty. Last time I played this game, I had multiple places to look at the map, but I linked them. You linked them? Oh, that's pretty cool. Of course, I had to use cheats, though, to keep my tongues from leaking and exploding. So that was. See, so it sounds very different. So I'm almost wondering if maybe that's the. Oh, this must be them. Oh, are these the sea treaders. Oh, look at you guys. You guys are pretty big, aren't you? Okay, if I go and scan these guys, then I think that's all my fauna. Uh, let's see. That's, that was honestly pretty cool, Kitty. I wish I could have seen that. That sounds like a really, really fun thing to do. I did read on the wiki that oh my god look at that that's so weird so they have like a leg on their face they're so weird but they're actually pretty cool i thought they would be more crab like but just like looking at their faces they look a lot more i don't know they look very unique yeah so from what i read on the wiki these things like poop or something so i don't know I assume that'd be a good source of biofuel if you need it. I don't know... I don't know how you get them to poop. That's pretty cool, though. This whole area looks pretty neat, actually. I kind of like it. I mean, I don't like it that much. <laughs> I don't like it enough to go over by that Reaper. I kind of have Reaper PTSD at this point. 
But they're cool. I was just like, poop. Can I scan this? No, but I'll take it. I may as well. I have no reason not to. They're cool. They're neat. They're my favorite creature in the game. I followed them all across the map before in a complete circle. That's cool. That's really cool. That's neat. They're very neat. I think that one might have been trying to attack my Cyclops, though. I'm not too sure. So is that all of the fauna, then? Did I get all of the fauna? Yeah, other entities I'm not counting. Yeah, I think I did. So assuming I'm right and I got the alien skeleton, the gargantuan fossil, and the research specimen theta... Then I should have everything scanned. So I will have a look at flora now. I guess I'll see. I'll see if there's any flora that I, I don't uh, don't have. Let's see. Subnautica flora. Subnautica flora. And we'll see what I have here. I'm not as interested in the flora. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not really as interested in the flora. The fauna I have more of an interest in. Did I say flora? I meant fauna. The fauna I have more of an interest in. The flora not quite as much. Um. Uh, okay, fauna. Flora. Exploitable. So acid mushrooms, blood root, blood vine, bulbo tree, Chinese potato plant. I really don't like it when it does that. Okay, so bulbo tree, Chinese potato plant. Creep vine, creep vine seeds. Deep shroom. Deep shroom's different. No, there they are, but I do have them. Fern palm, pearl, papyrus, gapes, feather, gel sack. I'm pretty sure I do have most of these at least. If not all. A ming plant. I'm, I think I have a ming plant. I think I got pink caps as well. Purple pine cones. I might actually not have all of these. Sulfur plants are harvestable. I might go get me some of those. Just for a little crash fish to live in. You're the same way? Yeah, I don't know. I just find the animals more interesting than the plants. The plants are cool, don't get me wrong. But, like, if I don't have all of them, I don't really care as much. I'll care a little bit, but I won't care quite as much about the flora. Not because I think they're not all that interesting. I just think, you know, I don't really... I don't really care to go around, like, looking for all the plants, right? Grub basket, Jaffa cap, pink cap. I think I do have everything, though. I want to say I probably have everything, probably, other than maybe the purple pine cone. So I don't think I have a purple pine cone. Um. I could go find it. I could, I mean, I have lots of time. I could still go and find all the stuff. Do I have a Ming plant? This one's actually a little bit harder because it's not quite in, um, yeah, I have a Ming plant. It's not quite in, like, a line like the fauna was. Spiked thorn grass. Do I have spiked thorn grass? I don't think I do. I do. Yeah, I might honestly have almost everything as well. Spotted duck leaf. Do I have spotted duck leaf? I do. 
I'll get the sulfur plant from a crash fish at home. Voxel shrub. I don't have a voxel shrub. Oh, no, I do. Never mind. I do have a voxel shrub. I think I have about everything, then. Do I have anchor pods? Can I scan those? I, well, I have them, so I guess I did. Blood grass. Did I scan blood grass? Can you scan blood grass? I don't think you can scan... Oops. I don't think you can scan blood grass. I don't think you can scan some of this stuff. Crab claw kelp. Might not have gotten that one. Drooping stingers. Giant cove tree. A grew cluster. Tree leech. Tree spawn. Um... You know what? Let's build the rocket and we'll see what we have after. Because, like, I don't want to spend, like, all this time looking for this other stuff only to go, well, shit, I can't, I don't have stuff to build the rocket, right? And then I spend, like, another hour trying to find everything for the rocket. So we'll go and we'll build the rocket first. I'll, I'll give the, I'll give the fauna a read when we get back home as well. Um... Let's see, let's see. Six fluid intake. Kitty says, I wish you could collect sea dragon bones using to build your base or army. That'd be cool. That'd be very Monster Hunter-esque. Collecting bones and just making it into your armor. That'd be sick. I'd like that. I will say, I do kind of like that this game isn't really about combat. I, I will say that. I, I like that it's more about exploration. And not fighting things. Like, as weird as, as that might sound. I do find it, like... Kind of a good thing that it's not about fighting. You fight in so many games, right? Sometimes it's nice just to be like, hey... You know, I just want to explore. And survive. You know, I don't really need to kill everything I see. Right? Yes, exploration, yeah. So I, I do actually really like that. I'm sure some people probably find it boring. You know, I don't. I certainly don't. I couldn't find it boring. Like, and matter of fact, I wish there were more games like this. I wish there were more games like this. I think I have a couple that maybe I could play. Like, I believe a game that I want to stream for you guys called Maya's Mata is a game that's kind of similar to this, but not quite. Um, by similar, I mean you're not really expected to kill stuff, I don't think. But I, it's, it's very exploration based. So to kind of give you an idea what Maizmata is, Maizmata, if, you, if you've never heard of it, Maizmata is, uh, you are on an island. You're, you don't know why you're there, amnesia, right? You know, it's kind of the typical amnesia thing. And you need to find your way off the island, but you have this weird cat-like monster chasing you. So you need to, like, survive and escape it whenever it shows up. Uh, but it's about exploring the island and kind of, like, picking up, like, journals and diaries and reading through them and finding out stuff about the island as you go. Uh, now, I've never actually played the game myself. I have seen a couple other people play it, although not all the way through because I, I didn't want to spoil. And it looked good. It looked really good. And one of my friends uh, who shows up to stream sometimes, Hannah, uh, a.k.a. Hannah Lydia... Um, I believe she got it for me. So, that'd be pretty cool to play. I think that'd be great. That's the only other game I can think of that's kind of more exploration-based. Mm, that I know of. For all I know, like, I also want to play Green Hell, which is very, uh, the foresty. But I don't quite know how that game is. I don't know if that's more fighting or exploration-based. I think it's... I think it's probably more exploration, but I'm not really sure. Six fluid intake immediately. Okay, so we'll park here. We'll park here. I'll eat some of these marble melons. And then we'll... Oh, I got the poop here. Yes, nice. And then... Well, I guess I'll put the poop away. I may as well. I have no reason not to. 
and then I'll read the data entries and then yeah we'll just make the rest of the ship and then we'll just see what happens um And if I feel I have lots of time left over, then yeah, we'll we'll go and we'll do. Um, we'll see if we can find some of the other fauna, not fauna flora. Uh, let's see. Kitty says you're basically a caveman or something living in a jungle, and each day you have to do things to survive. I since someone play Green Hill and you love watching, dude. I okay. Well, I'm definitely gonna play that soon. Then, if that's what it is, that sounds pretty good to me. You have to go have dinner and whatnot. I'll see you later, Frank. Have fun. Hey, you take care, Kitty. Uh, you have yourself a good dinner. Tell Jared I said hi. And yeah, I'll catch you later. Maybe come back and check this part of the VOD so you can see the data entries get read. Because I think I'm going to read through them right now. I think I'm going to read through at least the fauna. Um, and probably some of the other, the other stuff here. Just to, you know, make sure. So... See, I know I would have read all these before. I'll read through them all again anyway. I may as well. So we'll start from the top. This will do alien eggs. Alien eggs. Evidence suggests that a substantial number, if not all the local species you produce through egg laying. Eggs can be found resting on the seafloor, buried beneath detritus? Or even wedged into cracks in the rocks. Different species luckily favor different biomes to their nesting grounds. Eggs discovered in the wild are in some form of natural stasis, likely awaiting ideal conditions in which to hatch or the delivery of some vital enzyme, which will kickstart the process. It is impossible to calculate the species of the egg from the exterior. However, it may be possible to simulate, yeah, stimulate a hatching response if an egg is relocated to a suitable alien containment unit, which I have. I fun to see when I watch this back. I sounds good, Kitty. Somebody got infected. Bacterial infection report. You have been infected with previously unknown waterborne bacterium. It is currently multiplying in your bloodstream. Estimated incubation time two weeks. Your immune system is currently combating the infection at low efficacy. You may already be experiencing flu-like symptoms and skin irritation. These will likely be exacerbated as the bacterium takes hold. Your immediate priority should be abatement and eradication of the infection. Recommended steps. Salvage further alien research data on a possible vaccine. Investigate the mechanisms which have enabled the indigenous ecosystem to inhabit the symptoms of the infection. I thought there was more. So I was going to keep on talking, but I did not. Enzyme host peeper. A peeper specimen was observed emitting a faint fluorescent enzyme trail and engaging in unusual behavioral patterns. Peeper is actively approaching other creatures, including predators. The specimen is host to a bacterial infection, however, the infection is currently dormant. Peeper's stomach cavity contains an unknown enzyme of foreign origin. Chemical analysis of an enzyme. There is some superficial similarity to the stomach enzymes of larger predators. Contact with the enzyme appears to inhibit the symptoms of the bacterial infection. Complex structure renders synthesis impossible. Assessment. Recommended further research into enzyme origin. Enzyme host peepers leaving the containment facility. The outflow pipes are filled with peepers traveling back towards the surface. Specimens show no, symp uh, no symptoms of infection. All specimens scanned are carrying enzyme 42, which data suggests inhibit the bacterium. Specimen's stomach cavities are otherwise empty, suggesting they may have purged the contents before entering the pipes. Assessment. If peepers have evolved to distribute the enzyme via the pipe network, this may explain part of the mechanism by which life on 4546B has survived since the bacterial infection. Hatching enzymes. The emperor specimen's eggs are attached to some form of incubator. I know I read all this before, but like, say, why not, right? May as well just go through it all one more time. In a normal life cycle, it seems likely that sea emperors would have buried their eggs in shallower waters, where different organic materials in the soil would have triggered a hatching response. The incubator suggests the alien had the aliens had resorted to develop resorted I can't talk now to developing artificial hatching enzymes, which would stimulate simulate the eggs' natural hatching environment, but were unable to discover the formula. 
With extensive information on the sea emperors themselves, it may still be possible to fabricate an artificial hatching enzyme. Um, using indigenous ingredients. However, the only surviving source of that information may be the sea emperor itself. Hatching enzymes old. Static. I don't remember that. I don't remember that one. Uh, peepers entering the containment facility. The pipes drying water into the containment facility are filled with peepers arriving from the surface. The fish show no signs of distress. The specimens scanned have all consumed high quantities of seeds and organic matter from the surface. Some specimens are beginning to show signs of infection. I do find it funny that the peeper kind of became the symbol for this game, like the mascot, in a way. Ah, tasty water. I mean, they're a cool fish. I do like them. Peepers are pretty silly. Peepers inside the containment facility. While all of the creatures encountered within the facility are isolated within it, peepers appear to be coming and going of their own accord via the alien pipe network. On arrival, peepers are approaching the Sea Emperor. Peepers exhibit a natural affinity for the stomach enzymes being expelled by the Emperor. Peepers which have come into contact with the enzymes are returning to the pipe network. This behavior must be the source of enzyme 42 on 4546B, or the area thereof which supports life. It is likely also responsible for the survival of the Emperor and the other life forms contained within the facility. Uh, ray species on 4546B. Different species of ray indigenous to 4546B, which adapted to different environments. Uh, I thought it was going to be. I, I didn't think it was going to be a period there. Adapted to different environments. The specimens are 99.99% .99 genetically identical to those encountered on the planet today, suggesting that rays in particular have undergone little evolutionary mutation in the past millennium. Ghost rays, jelly rays, crimson rays, and rabbit rays likely all share a common evolutionary ancestor. Excuse me, sorry, that was, that was the water. Like it be anything else, I haven't drank anything else today, but water. Uh, the alpha ray, which would have evolved deep in the ocean trenches quickly growing in line with available food supplies. It would have most resembled the ghost ray in size and appearance, with translucent skin for camouflage and forward-mounted eyes for hunting. A fast and fearsome stalker of small creatures in the dark. While some rays have stayed within the limits of the cave systems where they first evolved, others are relatively more recent adaptations to new environments, likely the results of overpopulation. All of the rays on 4546B have given up pred predation in favor of herbivorous scavenging and use poisonous flesh to protect themselves. Sea dragon egg. Uh, this large egg held in a hermetically sealed environment and has been chemically sterilized without, uh, with the sterilized, yeah. without the means at the facility to house a fully grown sea dragon specimen, it is possible the aliens sought to study instead the egg laying an incubation process to what end is unclear so it sounds like the so now knowing what we know now it sounds like they were using probably a close relative of the sea emperor to uh well which would be the sea dragon to find out how to get the eggs to hatch because they couldn't do it with the sea emperor uh, so that's interesting sea emperor egg casing shell composition the shell casing is formed from thick layers of carbon composite suggesting an extensive gestation period. This leviathan species may give birth just once per century, perhaps just once in their lifetime. I believe we now know it's probably just once in their lifetime since the one that we uh, we were helping died when her babies were born. Well, I guess it's babies. Shell casing incisions. Precise incisions suggest a laser-based tool is used to cut open the egg casing and forcibly remove the fetus inside prior to full gestation. Analysis. Time pressure to develop a bacterial vaccine may have driven an the alien researchers to cut open this egg and remove the fetus for study. It is also possible that removed from its parent and natural habitat, some vital condition for the infants to hatch naturally was not met. Samper fetus. Found preserved in a display case, it was likely a child of the adult specimen contained within the facility. Physiology. 
Superficial damage to the speci specimen indicates it was artificially removed from its egg casing. Probably the same egg casing we had there. Uh, stunted tissue development suggests the organism expired during the removal process. Tissue samples have been taken from the digestive tract. Because now we know that the enzyme is in the stomach, right? It appears the aliens are attempting to formulate a cure for the bacterium from enzymes produced in the specimen's digestive system. Without a young, healthy specimen, these efforts were in vain. Specimen with symptoms of infection. This organism is displaying signs of a bacterial infection. Bright green blisters are forming networks around the infected si infection sites. Pathology suggests a waterborne bacterium capable of penetrating the body through the skin and respiratory system. Underlying indications of genetic mutation and aggressive behavior. The bacterium itself is unlike any so far recorded in human exploration. Warning, may be contagious. Contagious, yeah, I said that correctly, I think. Avoid, do not, under any circumstances, consume the flesh. Did I ever do that? I don't think I ever did. Uh, Samper's eggs. Uh, the Samper's eggs. Shell. Uncommonly strong shell lining. Organic growth on the exterior suggests these eggs may be hundreds or thousands of years old. Alien tubes. Alien devices penetrate the outer shell layer. Likely designed to supply them with nutrients and isolate them from the surrounding environment. Amniotic sac? Like many eggs on 4546B, these do not contain a nutrient supply which is slowly exhausted by the embryo. Instead, they exist in a form of natural stasis, awaiting appropriate hatching conditions. Fetal, fetal organism. There is a high genetic match between these organisms and the Leviathan in the vicinity. They appear to be stable and healthy. It is likely that ideal hatching conditions for the eggs vary considerably from the ideal survival conditions for the parents. And the life cycle. Oh, that's a bit long. Uh, available biological data has been used to synthesize the effects of the alien bacterium bacterium on the CM for his natural life cycle. This creature likely lived and moved in small herds around the planet's ocean trenches. Coming to the surface to feed off the huge volumes of microorganisms in the shallower waters. Family size would be strictly limited by available food supply. Offspring would likely split off at a young age to form their own herds elsewhere. Given their sparse population, mating and egg laying was likely infrequent, perhaps a once in a lifetime event. The species likely had a preferred environment for egg laying. In fact, successful hatching may depend on such conditions. Given the rarity of this event, it is impossible to calculate those conditions precisely. There is no evidence to support the assumption that all members of the species were immune from the alien bacterium. Even if this is so, there is evidence that introduction of the bacterium decimated life on the planet, and this would have had catastrophic effects on the Emperor's food supply and survival rate. The symbiotic relationship between the specimen and other life forms likely developed as a direct result of the bacterial infections. Those life forms which learned to keep the Emperor alive survived with its help. This may explain the vast tracts of lifeless ocean and a rough parameter around the Emperor's location. Blueprints. Uh, I have a few, a few of these. Uh, okay, so air pumps. Air pumps can be used to pipe breathable air to a remote location. The base attached air pump can be built at a compatible habitat and will source oxygen directly from the habitat's oxygen generator. The floating air pump must have access to breathable air and by and be floating on the water surface. Pumps must be connected to a pipe chain to function. I went way far down. I don't know why I did that. Uh, creature decoy. This advanced deployable is a catch-all solution for mimicking the behavior of a living creature. For purposes of scientific research or predator evasion. Vibrates, cycles air and water, and sends out randomized high-frequency sound waves to emulate a living organism. Maybe hand-placed or launched from compatible Cyclops submarines. Short onboard battery provides limited lifespan. Attracts predators of all kinds. This is my favorite tool right here. The handheld scanner. The essential science and survival tool. The scanner can be used to add new blueprints to memory and analyze unknown entities. It emits electromagnetic radiation in the specified direction, which is reflected by the environment and then analyzed to determine the physical makeup of the targeted object. 
It has four primary functions. Uh, blueprint acquisition. Require the physical parameters of scanned technologies to add their blueprints to the PDA databank. These blueprints may then be constructed at the appropriate fabricator. The scanner is also equipped to break down damaged and otherwise useless devices into their base materials for salvage purposes. Hey Mario, welcome back to the stream. We're just going through um, literally every databank because I don't quite remember what I've read before and what I may have just accidentally skipped over. So it's going to be interesting but maybe a little boring from a gameplay perspective. So hopefully you don't mind that too much, my friend. Uh, but how are you doing today? Uh, the scanner will attempt to match scanned organisms against the onboard database. If no match is found, then the species will be assigned an easy-to-remember name. That's clever. And a new databank entry will be created. Your PDA's AI will also attempt to synthesize theories on behavior tendencies and evolutionary origins where possible. As well as deliver assessments on how best to approach them. Medical Analysis Scanning any living organism will display basic information on their state of health on the scanner's HUD. This information will be limited without access to a network database. Uh, Self-scan. The user may run a self-scan to determine their own physical well-being. The scanner will search for foreign bacteria and other signs of ill health and compare with available data to provide a diagnosis. The Altera Spectroscope Scanner. Understanding the world so you don't have to. Uh, it's a lot. It, it looks like a lot. I don't think it's really going to be that much, which is why I'm doing it. Uh, because really, most entries are going to be like this. Some are going to be like this. Most are going to be like this. Right? So I'm thinking I can probably get through it pretty quickly. Going through the three games, I got 80% through but never finished. Dagging around for B3. Did you want Cyber Souls and Okami? So tomorrow I'll finish Okami. Dude, that's awesome. That's awesome. As you know, I do love Okami. I do love Okami. Now, I do want to play through it again. I'm just not too sure uh, when. But I do want to play through it again. But I'm glad you're doing good. I definitely need to play Cyber Sleuth and Danganronpa. I especially need to play Danganronpa. That's going to be happening soon. That one I can definitely promise. Lightstick. A mobile battery-powered LED light, which provides low-level lighting in a 360-degree area, and can be attached to most surfaces. Still got that Bloodborne, and yeah, I'm doing good. Yeah, I still need to do Bloodborne. I actually want to message Kevin to see when he's around. Cause I haven't heard from him in a while, so I hope he's doing okay. Cause I don't want to. I don't want. If I can, I don't want to do Bloodborne until he's around for it. Why does my nose feel like I need to blow it? Maybe I'll go. Maybe I'll go blow my nose and get some tissue sometime soon. The propulsion cannon allows technicians to manipulate gravitational forces at ranges of up to 20 meters. It is commonly used in construction and mining to move materials. Operating instructions. Pull the trigger once to lock onto and attract a single targeted object, weighing less than 25 kilograms. The object can now safely be retrieved from the gravitational beam. Alternatively, pull the trigger a second time to propel the object at speed away from the device. Not recommended for use on organic subjects. The prop cannon. Some species are telekinetic. For everyone else, there's Altera. Radiation suit. This suit fully protects against effects of radiation during land, sea, and space exploration. Uh, safety rated up to 400 CV an hour. Cross compatible with all AP, AEP suit functionality. And sleek. The radiation suit. A necessary precaution in a post-mad world. Uh, Cyber Sleuth is the best Digimon and best Pokemon game, and Pokemon should try to be even 10% as good as it. I've heard, see, I've heard good things about Cyber Sleuth, but I also hear some people say some negative stuff. It's mostly good, from what I've heard. Now in Zero Escape 999, I need to play that one too. It's an escape room game from people who made Danganronpa their first game. And it has algebra and math. I'd be bad at those two. I'm pretty bad at math and algebra. But, I do need to play through Zero Escape. Reinforced diving suit. The suit is reinforced with the, the suit is reinforced with synthetic fibers to reduce incoming physical and thermal damage. Shock absorption reduces physical impact velocity by approximately 50%. Rated for temperatures up to 70 degrees. Disclaimer. You are not invulnerable when wearing the suit. 
Three and four stag suit. Why take chances when you can take Altera? Repair tool. The repair tool can be targeted at any common device. Control panels, habitat modules, radios, etc. To stitch wires and seams back together at the atomic level. All good technicians keep one of these under their pillow. Most people don't care why it works, just that it saved their life that one time. But in case you're curious, it combines scanner and fabricator technologies to determine the proper specifications for the targeted object. And then rearranges the available physical material to match the original specs. The Altera Repair Tool. Get your fix. This is good. I'm glad I'm reading these again. Repulsion Cannon. The Repulsion Cannon is a modification of the base propulsion cannon which enhances its propulsion effect at the cost of the ability to drop jets closer. It can be fabricated using a modification station and is commonly employed in self-defense and as a less lethal firearm. Stasis Rifle. The Stasis Rifle uses patented technology to slow time around an entity to as near to a full stop as the laws of physics will permit. Essentially anchoring the target in place without affecting its internal workings. It is designed to facilitate scientific and engineering operations by expanding the window of opportunity for action in time-sensitive scenarios. The stasis rifle features an independent replaceable power cell, and the trigger may be held down to increase the area of effect and duration. Common applications include slowing fast-moving mechanisms, such as fan belts, to facilitate maintenance operations. Thank you, computer lady. I will eat or I will drink soon. Probably both in real life again and also in game. Uh, temporarily incapacitate organisms for research purposes, which I've done a lot. Navigating perilous spaces by freezing potential threats. I've done that a lot too. Haven't replaced any fan belts though. NB may not function correctly on larger life forms. The Altera Stasis Rifle. Life's fast. Why not put it on pause? Man, my hair really looks getting in my eyes to today. Isn't now, this one's new. This one we never actually read. Uh, as far as I'm aware. The industry standard still suit is designed to minimize water loss while exploring hostile environments by filtering and recycling body fluids. Reclaimed water is stored in containers for later consumption. Normal production rate is two bottles per day. That's pretty good. Filters contaminants from no less than four different bodily excretions. Blood and sweat may be effectively processed. Upgrade to Mark II to make the most of tears. I see. Onboard flavor neutralizers can be activated at startup. Flavor neutralizer not included in all models. So I'd be drinking my sweat, my blood, my tears, probably my pee. That doesn't sound too appealing. I don't I'm glad I never made the still suit. The still suit. Because drinking acclaimed urine is better than death by dehydration. I mean, they are right about that. That is true. You mean your eye patch? It basically is my eye patch, right? Time capsule. I wonder if I can leave these behind. These 30 containers are designed to store written and photographic evidence for later retrieval. In addition to a number of small items, time capsules are often fabricated by marooned survivors, seeking either to aid those who find themselves in the uh, same predicament in the future. Or to leave evidence of their plight, which may be found along after their bodies have disintegrated. Most emergency escape vehicles are equipped with a time capsule by default, usually found in the cockpit, and be jettisoned on takeoff. Altera requests time capsules be stocked with tools and resources, which will aid those who may discover them in the future. So, I'm assuming I probably get to leave one when I take off on my ship. So, if I do that... I know what picture I'm going to take. I definitely know what picture I'm going to take. But what do I leave behind? I have a lot of stuff. I'll see what I can do. I'll see what I can do for the next person that plays this game. Uh, habitat installations. Well, before I do that, I better go and eat me a melon. Oh, these did grow. Nice. Eat me some melons. Eat me some melons. Bonk, 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 bonk. Okay, good. Okay, where was I? Where was I? Do I have some of these that I didn't listen to? 
Nah, I just didn't like look at them in here, I guess. Holy shit, how many days are we on? We're on day 183. I've been on this planet for almost a year. Wow. Well, no, not really. Like half a year, I think. Just a little over half a year. Uh, do, do, do. Let's see. Alien Containment. Now, I haven't read this one yet either. Uh, despite huge Altera-led advancements in stellar technology, exploring new worlds still has its challenges, and alien life forms are one of them. That's why we built the Alien Containment Unit. The unit is designed primarily to breed larger or more dangerous species. Technical provisions. Units must be installed in multi-purpose room modules. Units may be connected between rooms stacked in a column. The hatch must be installed in order to access the unit. The base of the unit is a planter, allowing sea floria to be grown from seed. Breeding tips. Uh, providing, provided sufficient time and living space, organisms of the same species... Uh, hold up. I am being moved by something. So I'm going to turn this on. And I'm just going to move forward a smidgen. Just a smidgen. Not going to move too far. Just going to basically get in our car and repark. Uh, eggs inside the unit will hatch over time. Organisms raised from birth and ca in captivity often exhibit unusually passive behavior. Warnings. Environmental controls may fail if the unit is overpopulated. Infections may be transmitted faster between specimens and artificial environments. And never tap the glass. You don't know it will tap back or how hard. That's right, I need to get my crash fish a little thing too. Well shit, I'm gonna like leave them in there. Hey Tots, welcome back to the stream. How you doing today? The aquarium is designed to uh, yeah, the aquarium is designed to hold and sustain up to eight small aquatic organisms and fits inside a regular multi-purpose habitat room. Aquatic creatures make up 70% of all known species, making the aquarium a commonly deployed tool in many exploratory operations. It is just as often used to house livestock for later consumption as it is to hold specimens for xeno research. An automated environmental regulation system means that no need to feed or care for your subjects. Oh, there's no need to feed or care for your subjects. NB, due to its size, the regular aquarium is not rated for breeding applications, and creatures are highly unlikely to mate. Constructs a full-size alien contain uh, construct a full-size alien containment unit for this purpose. So, Tots, uh, just so you know, we're going to be going through the data logs. I'm going to go through all of them, because I'm not too sure what I've read in the past and what I haven't. And it looks like a lot, but it's not really going to be. It's, we can go through this pretty quickly. I don't know what that is, Tots. It's making me question what that is. Is that an eye? Is that an emote? Tots, why do you always do this? Why do you always do this to me? Bulkhead door. The bulkhead door is designed to separate compartments while reinforcing structural integrity with a solid titanium frame. The door can be opened and closed to seal off compartments in the event of fire or flooding, or simply for privacy. Sus, fire Tots. You calling me sus? Come on, Tots. I'm not sus. I, maybe I could be a little sus. I'm not too sure. Am I sus? Exterior grow bed. Advanced synthetic soils allows this grow bed to support a huge variety and quantity of alien plant life and can be installed anywhere on land or underwater where there is space. Fabricator. Fabrication technology is the power to arrange matter at the atomic level. It was the catalyst behind the great expansion and remains the backbone of the modern world. Fabricators come in all shapes and sizes, but the most common are small enough to be wall-mounted, and are used for everything from constructing everyday implements to cooking dinner. It is common today for households to keep a store of genetic-based materials on hand for any eventuality. Floodlight. The standard-issue floodlight is designed to focus a bright beam of light in a single direction, useful in all kinds of industrial and, envir and emergency operations, functions in all known environments. Uh, habitat Builder. The Altera handheld Habitat Builder has been an essential tool of xenoscientists, colonists, uh, of xenoscientists, colonists, and emergency relief crews across 11 different transgovs for more than 50 years. Habitat modules are hermetically sealed from the outside environments. Build on land, underwater, or in a vacuum. That sounds handy. Habitats can be enhanced to become long-term homes, 
remote research stations, defensive outposts, and more. Quick start guide. Select the basic compartment from the builder menu and place it somewhere opportune. Add a hatch to access the compartment. Build a solar panel to power the habitat's oxygen generator. Construct useful interior module, modules like radios, rechargers, and storage solutions. Primary habitat systems like oxygen generation and flood control, as well as modules like the fabricator, draw power and will not function without it. Additional compartments reduce overall hull integrity, depending on the external pressure. Quick build habitats. A home far, far away from home. Uh, interior grow bed. Designed to, use designed to use exclusively inside regulated habitat modules. The interior grow bed is more compact than the outdoor version and features a hydroponic nutrient delivery system. Modification station. Let me have it sip. I'm, I'm doing a lot of reading here. I'm not gonna lie. You do this much reading, it will hurt your throat. We good. We good. For the standard fabricator, atomically uh, rearranges raw materials to form complex devices. <laughs> the mod stations the bleh, the mod stations able to combine complex devices to enhance their function. Most industrial vessels are fitted with a complementary a complement, excuse me, of equipment modification stations, which enable engineers to adapt their tools on the fly. To conserve hard drive space, the modification station is excluded by default from most personal emergency blueprint libraries. However, extreme environments such as ocean and desert plan class planets may necessitate the adaptation of basic survival tools for unanticipated applications. For this reason, access to a mod station is always recommended. I never read up on the moon pool. See, I think at some point I just kind of let these grow and then I, I, I just kind of stopped reading them, right? And I'm like, oh, I'll just do them all at the end. And now I kind of have a lot that I gotta get through, but you know. The moon pool is an essential module for long-term exploration. Its primary function is a dry do is as a dry dog for small vehicles such as sea moth and prawn suit. The large central chamber contains a pressurized pool which provides ready access to the surrounding waters and comes as standard with equipment for raising and recharging a vehicle. When outfitted with a vehicle modification station, the moon pool can be used to build and equip vehicle upgrades. Dimension, 16 meter, oh, I don't need to read all this. Connection point six, habitat, all strength, liability, equipment of four rooms, capacity one seamoth and crown suit, high power consumption. Planters and pots. Interior planters come in a variety of configurations and allow for most plant species to be grown in small numbers for decorative or botanical use. Scan room. My favorite room. My favorite room. Because I build a lot of them. This advanced habitat module can transform a small outpost into a burgeoning science and exploration station. A 3D display in the center of the room stores local topographical data. Systems can scan and pinpoint particular materials. Remotely controlled drones scan the area up to 500 meters in range. Wall mounted camera feed allows for live control of scouting drones. Upgrade console may be used to enhance modules functions. Hmm, I'm kind of wondering when I should break and actually do some stuff in the game, like start building my, my rocket. Solar panel. Solar power is the most prevalent power source in the galaxy, and so it is no accident that the standard solar panel is the default means of powering a habitat. A power source is a requirement of habitat oxygen generators and other onboard modules. Provides limited power for small outposts and survival habitats. May be mounted on or near the habitat itself or placed remotely and connected via power transmitters. Power rate is relative to sun exposure. Yeah, I remember we used to use these a lot and they used to um, run out of power. My base used to run out of power a lot. Well, my initial base before I got the, um, what is it? What I put in there? I put in the, uh, the atomic thing. I put in some kind of, like, uh, power generator. I don't remember what it was. Some kind of uranium generator? I don't quite remember. Uh, solar panel? Spotlight. A permanent lighting solution developed for installation on existing habitats and facilities. 
Automatically rotates on a 180 degree arc. Motion sensitive. We'll track nearby moving objects. Draws electricity for main power. See, I should have put some of these on. Well, I guess I never really needed to. Water filtration system. The filtration system draws water unfit for human consumption from an external source. Automatically splits it into its constituent parts and outputs consumable liquid water and salts while disposing of any harmful byproduct. It can be built in any compatible habitat module, but has substantial power requirements. The Altera Water Filtration System. Any liquid into pure, refreshing pH balanced water? Yes, sir. Any liquid. Now that's sus. Uh, let's see. Power. I only have a few on power. Yeah, uh, I guess it's a nuclear reactor. I guess, yeah, yeah, I guess the word nuclear reactor kind of escaped me there for a bit. Bioreactor. On planets where organic matter is plentiful, but sunlight is not, a reliable bioreactor will frequently prove the most efficient power solution. It may be installed in any multi-purpose habitat room. Chemically compost organic materials, converting them into energy over time. Accepts all plant matter from seeds and spores to moldy fruits and vegetables. Can also process animal matter, fat, muscles, eggs, etc. And some organic waste products like poop, like from the sea traders. Energy production is proportionate to the calories in the organic matter. The bioreactor. Totally organic. Probably twice as expensive. Renewable energy sources will usually be sufficient for maintaining a small outpost. For everything else, there's nuclear power. Powered uh, by up to four replaceable uranium reactor rods. Do not attempt to replace reactor rods without a full radiation suit. Do not attempt to overclock the reactor. Nuclear is ideal for energy intensive operations, such as self sufficient colonies supporting more than 20 people, industrial outposts operating multiple docks and heavy machinery, and research stations hosting live specimens. And the thermal plant. Uh, maybe I'll do thermal plant and then we'll do a little bit more of the gameplay. Do a bit more of the actual video games. Thermal plant. The first rule of survival in hostile environments is to work with the resources available. If it's 800 degrees outside and you're in danger of burning to death at any moment, you may as well get some cheap, reliable energy out of it. Convert heat energy into electricity. Always take thermometer readings before attempting installation. Core mechanisms are housed in heat-resistant cases, chassis, chases, but are not impervious to extreme temperatures. The thermal power plant. It's hot. Uh, okay, we'll read more of these later. First, let's go ahead and build the rocket ship. Like I said, it probably will take a little while. Like I said, I'm not going to say it's the most interesting. But I figure for anyone curious, I may as well read through them, you know. I have really no reason not to. I hate you so much, Reaper. The Reaper really is a piece of shit. I, a piece of shit? A piece of shit. Like, it's a total asshole. Like, let's see, like, where is it? Like, look at it! Look at it, he's being a little asshole. Uh, okay, we'll go ahead and we'll turn you off. Okay, so what is it that I need then? And do I have it on my person? Okie dokie. So we need to go ahead and we need to build... Boosters. Okay, so I need a plus steel ingot, nickel ore, aerogel, and a wiring kit. Well, I, I can get all of that pretty easily. Uh, I'll see... What do I have on me? Um, I'll see if I have any of that here. I don't think I'm going to have the aerogel. But I think I have titanium. Because last night I got a lot of titanium. And I think it should be enough to get me through. So 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Do I need one plus steel ingot? Or do I need two? I think I only need one. Let me just double check here. Uh, boosters. Yeah, I need one plus steel ingot. 
three nickel ore. I think I have a lot of nickel on me still. I better. If I don't, I need to go get nickel. That's going to be a bit more of an adventure. But I think I have a lot of nickel ore. I might have even left a lot of it in that one base now that I think about it. Hmm. If I don't have... Oh, no, maybe I do, because that one guy did leave me um, a thing of nickel ore in his... Uh, in his... Um, what was it? What was it? He left it in his... Um, what is it? What are they called? They're called... Um, time capsules. There you go. The word wasn't coming to me. The word wasn't coming to me for some reason. I was thinking, like, supply capsule. But I'm like, well, no, it's not a supply capsule. Because that's different. That's a different thing altogether. But it wasn't really coming to me. Okay, we'll park... Park right here. I should be far enough away. Because I'm pretty sure I have nickel ore like in my base. And I can get arrow gel. Well, I need to go in my base anyway, because I need to see my new my new fish pets. Well I say pets, they're specimens. But you know, a similar thing. Similar thing.